Uh, Giles reporting. We're joined now by the UKIP MEP, Patrick O'Flynn. Welcome back to the program. Uh, let me come to you, Dan Hannan, first. Uh, the, the President of the Commission is talking about 160,000 refugees, asylum seekers, migrants, whatever you'd like to call them. They are already in Hungary, Italy and Greece. I know of no way with, uh, the UK, how you could send them back or where you would send them back to. Surely if Europe means anything, you have to divide that 160,000 in some <laughs> equitable way among the member states. Well, first of all, you can't have a quota system and free movement of people. You, you have one or the other, but there's no way you can say to someone, you stay in Bulgaria because you're part of their quota, you can't go to Denmark. But no, I think uh, fundamentally that is the wrong priority. If you say that we're not taking the people who have applied properly, we're not taking the people who have been judged to be refugees by the UN, we're taking those who have already made the journey, then in practice you are contracting out our immigration policy to the people carriers. So what do you do with them? Uh, many of them are economic migrants, many of them are identifiably from countries where there isn't a war and where they are not legally refugees. Now, don't get me wrong, I have every sympathy for them. You know, I hope that in their position yeah. I'd be doing but, what they but, did, but, what, but they but do what not have the you, legal right to do What would you do with them? Uh, you, you, in, with the people who are already here, you need to repatriate them to their country of origin. What, to Syria? No, not no, not the Syrians. The ones who are not from Syria. Who are you know? I was I, I just no, came back I, from Italy. I was. No, I, and I understand I they're not S Syrians. Syrian no, I understand that. The, where but I that's because working. I understand that. But that's because the Syrians, uh, for obvious geographic reasons, have chosen the Turkish right. uh, route instead. So as I, I say again, what would you do with them? Well, with the Syrians. We're talking about, first of all, a tiny percentage of the total, right? There are 7 million displaced in Syria, 4 million on the border, maybe 100,000 in Europe. So the mu whatever you do with that 100,000, and, okay, you can spread them out, you can let them all go to Germany, you've still got an, a, a huge number of people in far more dire need. And I think we do now need to look at establishing safe havens, both in Syria and maybe also in North Africa, places where... People can, in a safe environment, make their application claim, have that process going on before right. they get to the EU, and then you can distinguish between those who are in need of sanctuary and those who are not. I suppose the danger of, of trying to allocate the 160,000 is that the other half million who would like to come over to Europe as well say, hey, this is it's very risky, it's dangerous, but if we get there, it's now going to be worth our while. Should there Andrew, you have to be honest, there is some incentivization when people see 800,000 in Germany. We have to be honest about that. There's also saturation in the camps. That's another reason people are coming in such dramatic numbers just at the moment. And what Dan is saying can happen. We can, as a nation, take people directly from the camps. Lebanon is in trouble now. But you asked the question, what happens to people here in the European Union mm. who are genuine refugees? They can't go back to Syria. They can't go back to Libya. So the rest of the European Union, aside from the UK, because we will opt out of this more than likely on Monday, will have to do something about that because Sweden, as you mentioned, Germany can't keep taking those levels of numbers. I think Sweden took something like 10 or 11,000 last month. Mm. Uh, our, our pattern will be to take from, directly from... The uh, camps region. rather than the people yes, who are there. Yes, 20,000 over five years. Yes. So even if that's our policy and we defend that policy, that's fine. But remember the proportionality there, remember the, what we're doing. So that's fine, that's our choice. But we will have to do something about Europe because it's a crisis. The other reason we'll have to do it is because people will keep coming to those borders. Right. Why? Because of the saturation of the camps. Even if we're giving that amount of aid, which is absolutely generous in our country, we are giving great amounts of aid. The fact is the UN aid is running down and the I camps I saw that, saturated. that you were saying that they're running and out of saw Lebanon as well. Let, let me bring you, Kip, in. Hmm. What would you do with the 160,000 refugees or migrants, call them what you will, they're clearly people in have been in some trouble, what would you do with them? Well, the key thing is that distinction, isn't it? And the economic migrants who've come in breaking the rules cannot be seen to succeed or there'll be new pull factors. And almost every element of the Juncker plan, from dumping the Dublin rules about claiming in the first safe country, giving access to the labour market, absorbing 160,000, they all salved his conscience and the conscience of the, the left of centre parties, uh, but they will all increase pull factors. And I'm afraid when I listen to Claude, I'm reminded of the view that the immigration debate in the Labour Party is people in big houses telling people in small houses that there's lots of room in Britain. And we but have 
diametrically different needs as regards right. immigration but to the rest you, of Europe because we you, are not depopulated. I understand. You, but you, you're drawing the scene between a refugee and an economic migrant, and that's mm. been legally, historically, a, a distinction. Mm. I wonder if it's a distinction that is really either identifiable or enforceable anymore. I mean, how, if you take a Syrian from Aleppo, Mm -hmm. where President Assad has been dropping barrel bombs and there's been intense fighting there. The economy's been ruined. Mm -hmm. uh, people who did not side with one or the other could be in danger. Someone fleeing from Aleppo, are they a refugee or are they an economic migrant? Well, they, they have a good claim to be a refugee, don't they? They need to claim uh, asylum and refugee status in the first safe country. So a lot of economic are migrants are also, are also asylum seekers. Well, as, as Dan said, many of these people are not coming from... from from persecution. They're coming from poor countries. And we cannot, and I don't believe mm -hmm. even the liberal left in this country would sustain a position where we send out a signal that anyone from a poor country uh, can land in Europe. And you well, know, what, Angela what, Merkel can say 800,000, yes, but they could be our 800,000. What about Eritrea, which is essentially a living hell on earth? Mm -hmm. Uh, and where there is, is a form, almost, they call it military service, but it's a form of, of slavery uh, for a part of your life if you're a young man. Surely anybody fleeing from there could claim refugee status. Andrew, there's a lot of bad countries in the world, mm. a lot of bad regimes. We cannot, if we're to stay in our way of life, uh, give the young men of every uh, horrible regime uh, a green card or whatever you want to call it to, to come to Britain. We have not only an immigration problem because of population density, we have an integration problem too in that some of our migrant communities have not yet, and I put it no higher than this, successfully and fully integrated into British values and people, that's a legitimate... I'll I, 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 I come to Dan and then... You. ...here also of democratic control. Uh, I think most of my constituents will accept a measure of controlled legal immigration. And I think most people, not everyone, there will you know, be some people watching who think it's a rubbish idea, but most would also accept that there should be a refugee component in that. But in exchange, they want to know that we are in control of who comes in and in what numbers. And of course, as long as we're in the EU, we have no such control. And that's the basic problem. And I'd say one more thing. There will be British people of Commonwealth origin watching this program now who know how difficult it is, mm. you know, to bring auntie over for a wedding mm. because we've had to crack down so extremely on non-EU migration so as to free up unlimited space for people with zero connection to the UK who happen to hold EU passports. Now, as we celebrate the centenary of all the volunteers who came and helped us when we were most in need, I think that is a shoddy way to be treating the relatives of those men. There may be an element of, of, of this of public opinion uh, uh, being hostile to taking too many or even any in some cases because there was a sense that over the past 20 years or so the politicians lost control of the borders uh, and that immigration became uncontrollable so they're reluctant now an Australian friend friend of mine was saying that um, they've instituted much tougher controls and they don't la allow the boats to land everyone has to go to a camp in Papua New Guinea or somewhere but he said as a consequence of the feeling that we now control our borders again mm -hmm. Australia has now taken Generous. the highest per mm -hmm. capita right. Syrian refugees right. In the world, and even by the more way, than a lot, of those, a lot of those guys from Burma and Bangladesh are now coming mm. to Europe because they can't get into Australia. Australia. A point that I haven't That's an interesting, isn't it? Uh, it's very interesting. Australia has just taken 5,600. Yeah. Canada has just taken 10,000. Um, but these are continental-sized countries. Can, 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 can with, you hold on? Hold on. No, 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 Patrick, Australia. Most Australians Australia, live in the same place. Patrick, Australia has got a smaller population than us. Do you, and do you don't, know what the landmass comparison is? Two hundred times. Patrick, people don't live in the outback for goodness' sake. <laughs> <sake. laughs> they live in the cities. Even so, Andrew, please, far more space. We'll give you a geography lesson later. We'll give you a geography lesson later. I think my geography has been proven right. You made your point. Let him finish. I think Andrew's point is correct, which is that. Australia, because of this kind of, um, you know, the way that it's gone is now generous. Canada's recovered that point. Look, look, the point is this. You're right about population density. Nobody's arguing that. But you're wrong about people wanting open doors. Nobody does. My party doesn't either. What we want is fairness and distribution. And let me finish the point. By opting into something where we know there is a crisis that may impact on us, whether we're in the EU or not, people may come to our... Let me finish the point. We, we come to our shores and cause um, 
uh, issues for our, our infrastructure and so on, it is better to plan and organise compassionately for a crisis that is already there in the European Union than not do that. So opting into some management of that okay. is better. Well, yes, making but, a but, case but, but, for leaving the EU. Let, yes, because we can then we have we a all, Canada or Australia have. type immigrants. Oh, hold on. Let, let, let Patrick respond. You say you don't respond. want an open door. We already have an open door to more than 200 neighbouring countries, more than 400 we million people, with Turkey uh, in an accession process. We don't have an open door we, to after what Juncker and Merkel are saying and the way they're treating this increasingly, we they'll become an open door to the whole world so long as we're but trapped in the EU. we don't have an open door to refugees and there's no point in saying if that. If they acquire passports in Germany or any other EU country, then yes, we do. We're not but, to many people, but to many people's That's dismay, we're not it, it is That's British another. government policy not to take any of the 160,000. So, that is well, well, so, so why is that an open door? So it's not an Look, open what door. we're talking about is Juncker and, and Merkel's plan. Yeah. We'll, we'll see 160,000 right, absorbed that, in that, Europe. That's not going to affect any well, right right until they get EU passports. Uh, because passport. because we're not in Schengen and we have an opt-out. An EU passport so will mean freedom that? of movement in terms of the United Kingdom. Patrick, Patrick, we are contracting Patrick, out our immigration Patrick, first controls we're not in Schengen. to Juncker. First, we're not in Schengen. Secondly, we're but opting out of the 160,000. Hold on. First, we're not in Schengen. Secondly, we're not opting into the 160,000. Thirdly, we're not opting into the 120,000. So how are these people going All to right. be coming? Okay, because we're going to, we'll, get EU we'll have to leave it there. Course. I have a feeling we'll be coming back to this. Indeed.